no, no. But hold on. But that was also a uh, a history making fight too. Yeah, yeah. No, Why don't yeah. you share that with the children? Well, with the sponsor banner, you mean? Yeah. Okay, so I got uh, I just got the picture finally. So I mean, it's been how many years since UFC sixty nine? It was April two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. It's fuck, man. I mean, that was. It's been like ten years. We're looking at yeah, one hundred and thirty months. So, <laughs> MMA Junkie did an article. Fuck. I'll go and tell the full story because I, it's kind of historic, right? Yeah, I enjoy it. So I was the first person to actually use a fight sponsor banner in the history of the sport, which I wish I got residuals on like every sponsor banner since then because that'd be pretty sweet, right? Well, every single everybody uses them now except so, UFC now. So oddly enough, from the time I drop we dropped the banner till now sitting in this podcast room, no one's ever asked me about it. But there's been one article done about it from MMA Junkie. I think they talked to John Morgan or something and. Somebody was on like this this trail to like find who the first sponsor banner was, like who used the first sponsor banner, and and it was you in Houston. Well, here's it was me, yeah. In so fucking Houston. Here's the funny thing, <clears throat> I actually learned I was the first to use the sponsored banner from that article. Uh, I know this sounds weird. I'm gonna I'm gonna make more sense out of this in a second. So I'm looking at the internet and it says uh, who was the first. Uh, uh, person to use a sponsored banner and fighting now i knew i was one of the first for sure but i didn't know if i was the first right because at the time you know like say you get a new sponsor on your shorts and you've never seen it before you don't know that no one else has used that that sponsor yeah, yeah. you just know that you know you haven't seen it so when we decided to do the banner i know i've never seen it before and it was a huge risk but i didn't know if someone else did it or not and i never thought nothing else about it because i lost the fight by decision and then it was it was a traumatizing fight. I was going to fight Anderson Silva if I won that fight. It was number one, number one contender fight. It was in Houston. I forgot I was so I didn't give fight. a shit about the banner. But anyway, so I'm looking at this article on MMA Junkie, and I'm like, damn, I wonder who, who was the first person to use the first sponsored banner if it wasn't me. And I go through the article, and I think the article was done in 2013. So, I mean, it's still been yeah. Yeah. four years. So you've and, been holding this in for four years? And still, no one's asked me nothing about it. So anyway, they go through the article, and they watched every UFC, every match, and the first time they ever saw somebody drop a sponsored banner was me. And they announced it in the article, and they said, blah, blah, blah. And then I started remembering, and I'm like, yeah, that makes sense, because I remember John, uh, well, John Fitch first mentioned it, I think, to Bob Cook, the American Top Team used to drop their team banner, and it said American Top Team. And Bob Cook, we were getting a lot of sponsors at the time. Me and uh, it was me, Koscheck, Fitch, Forrest, Chuck. We we were all kind of dealing with the same management, and um, we had a lot of sponsors. So I think Bob then took it from there and said we should put um, sponsors on the banner. And it was just hearsay, not hearsay, but just talk and like you know, nothing nothing came of it. And then I had the next fight, and I had a lot of sponsors. And I remember Bob came up to me and he goes. So Swick, and this was pretty close to the fight, mind you. And he goes, Swick, what do you think about us dropping a vinyl banner behind you when they do the introductions, and we put your sponsors on there, and we'll make you a little bit more money? What sponsors? Do you remember any of them? It was Toe to Toe, Sprawl, Renegade Fightwear, and Pain Incorporated. No Condom Depot? No Condom Depot. Did you ever have Condom Depot? Nope. So uh, I remember thinking to myself... Well, the first thought I had was, and, and I hope I'm right about this, but I remember that I think Rico Rodriguez, at one point in the early days, uh, he wanted to put a, I don't know if he wanted a banner, and he didn't want a banner, actually, that was, it wasn't a banner, but he wanted to put a big uh, tattoo on his back, like a painted, was a hentai or whatever, of uh, uh, Golden Casino something dot com dot net. Rico Rodriguez. Yeah, it was one of the first yeah. like uh, like gambling online casino things. And I remember he was trying to do it or something, and then Dana put a stop to it. But it was somewhere else. It was it, they banned that sponsor for whatever reason, and he was trying to find a way to go around the system. And so he ended up putting it on his back, and no one knew. And then he walked out and he fought with it. And I believe Dana lost his shit, and the UFC got pissed and fined him and all this stuff. So that's all I thought about at that point, right? I'm thinking, like, dude, you drop a fucking vinyl banner behind me, and, like, I'm going to get fucked for sure. I can kind of block that out, though. Well, it was so close to the fight, and I'm thinking, like, I mean, I, it took me a second to think about it, to be honest. It wasn't, like, an instant answer. And then, and then 
Bob's like, well, I mean, what can they do? What's the worst they can do? You're already out there. You're going to fight. I'm like, well, they can find me. They can kick my corner out. I mean, I didn't want to come back. Point. Yeah. I didn't want to come back after the second round and no corners there because Dana's like, you know, what the hell were you guys doing? Get out of here. You don't listen to them anyway. But I had a good relationship with Dana. And so I think that's the only reason why I said, cool, let's do it. Because I'm like, I get along really well with Dana. We've done a lot, a lot of PR together. So I'm like, at worst case, he's going to come to me and say, Swick, what the hell are you doing? Like, really? You're going to put a banner without asking me? Well, see, what's crazy is when you fought at 189, the last fight, you were able to use a banner. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, no, no. No, I did it. That was the f so I was on the first so I was the first guy to actually use a sponsored banner and I was on the first card that the UFC stopped using banners. Yeah. So the fight before that I went I went with you, went backstage, I actually took the banner to go get it checked. You remember that? Oh that's when I was getting reamed by the guy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was But it's ironic that because you did that banner shit ten years ago, he had a job. This guy has a job. Now. Right. Yeah, so what happened there was in the morning, for those of you who don't know, in the morning of the fight, ironically, the maybe it's the weigh-ins or the fight at that time. I don't remember. But they got to check shorts. You had to get your shorts checked. You had to get the sponsor banner checked, and they have to approve the logos, which makes sense. I get it, and they did. I've always done everything by the book. I've never tried to you know sneak anything or put an extra sponsor on, and they they checked it. They signed off on it, and then come fight time backstage, they looked at my banner and it wasn't signed off on. So then they're giving me a hard time, and they're like, "You can't walk out. You can't fight." And I'm like, buddy, I don't need this stress right now. I'm about to literally walk out and fight. And this is approved. I mean, it's the same. You see my shorts are approved. It's the same sponsors. Like, what's the problem here? You know, and he's just like, well, this is my job, you know, to like, you know, look after the sponsor banners and make sure that they're, they're all right well, and everything. Makes an hour. And like, we went into this whole, we were like arguing like backstage and then Hav jumped in and like, or Bob or whoever. And, and I was just thinking to myself, I was like, man, I was like, I was the first guy to ever use a sponsored banner, <laughs> and you're giving me Trend shit seven. about it. You know, like it's like crazy. How ironic! I got is that? you this job, dickhead. Well, I didn't say it quite like that. I would have, but I was the first guy to use one, and then they all of a sudden. But going back, I want to go back a little bit. How crazy this is! When I dropped that sponsored banner at UFC 69, not a fucking word was said, not a peep. I didn't know what to do. Dana, the UFC, a fighter. Not a single person said a single word to me. They didn't ask a question. They didn't say, you know, why did you do that? How did you do that? Did the UFC approve it? Did you get in any trouble? Not a single word was said. And if you look at the picture, which we'll have to post, um, you can see Dana looking down as I'm standing there at the teleprompter. And of course, of he's course, see he has that yeah. look on his face. Of course, he's thinking to himself, like, what in the hell is Swick doing? Like, what is this? Did big? you ever talk to him about And it was big. No. I've never said – this is the first time ever, 10 years later. This is the only time I've ever talked to anybody about this, aside from just you and, and people mm -hmm. that know me. Not a single reporter has ever asked me for my – even after that article came out in 2013 from MMA Junkie, they never called or got my, my – you would think they'd want to know, like, why would you do it? Did the UFC tell you to do it? But immediately following that fight, it became the thing to do. And again, no one ever Every said anything. Every single person. Every the fight. The next card had a few more. Boxing did it. Taekwondo. Then a few more. Then a few more. And then pretty soon it was like everybody was doing it. And then after that, K1. the UFC had a whole division for it. Like it started becoming like a, they had a whole like sponsorship department that like checked the sponsors and you had guidelines and forms you had to fill out and everything. And I'm just people, like, wow. If y'all are listening, y'all better thank Mike for that because I'm sure they're getting paid decent. I'm sure somebody would have figured it out either way. But it's just weird to me that like. You did it. It's still weird to me that to this day up and, you know, no one's ever asked about it. That's the strangest thing. Edison was the first to do what, a light bulb or some shit? Not to say anybody ever would have done it, but he was the first. You're the Thomas Edison <laughs> of the a UFC. Little, a little bit different. A little bit different. I'm just trying to shine some light on the subject. Yeah. That's a light bulb joke, Mike. I get it. I get it. But, uh, yeah, so, I mean, there's that, you know. It's, uh, it's cool. I'm going to post that picture soon now that I just got it. I've been busy with this fight card and everything, but uh, yeah, I mean that's that's uh, it's historic, I guess. You know, yeah. I want to make like a duplicate, like a remake of that banner and put it at the gym. I already got so much stuff going up there, Mickey Rourke and like Mark. Yeah, where's, where's our shit from Mickey Rourke? Oh yeah, that should be coming in soon. If not, we can make a small banner. We don't need the fucking eleven by eleven foot banner. We just do a nah, small. We'll, nah, we'll, yeah. Just old school stuff, you know. Yeah. Maybe let this fella do it. Real quick, real quick, real quick, with Mike's
swig. 